Hello, everyone. Welcome to Chinese Grammar Simplified. My friend Lucy is an avid reader. She has recently found great joy from reading Chinese novels, but she gets really confused about the ways Chinese use the character "cai" in sentences. It can be used as an adverb, a verb, or a noun, and the meanings are so different that they seem to have no connection at all. To help Lucy better understand the way "cai" is used in Chinese. And to improve her reading comprehension, in the next five minutes, let's break down and simplify the ways the character "cai" is used as an adverb and a verb in Chinese. Let's start. As an adverb, "cai" is usually placed right before a verb or an adjective in a sentence. There are three major ways it can be translated. They are actually, finally, and merely. These English words may seem quite different from one another. But there is an overarching theme here, which emphasizes the overturning of the previous expectation. In the very first scenario, we'll see "cai" used in the following pattern: a statement to indicate previous expectation, new subject, plus "cai" plus verb or adjective. "Cai" here is to emphasize that the truth is different from the previously stated expectation. And the new subject is what actually fits the expectation. So "cai" here may be translated into English as "actually" or "instead." And the pattern means statement of previous expectation, new subject plus "actually" or "instead" plus verb or adjective. For example, if I say, 那个女生不是 Lucy， 这个才是 I am saying that girl is not Lucy. Actually. This girl is. If I say, 我以为这本书是 Lucy 的，原来那本才是。I am saying, I thought this book was Lucy's. It turns out actually that one is. If Lucy says 这本书不好看，那本才好看。Can you figure out what she means? Yes, she's saying, this book is not fun to read. Instead. That one is. Again, "cai" in this case is only used to emphasize the new subject. It doesn't work if we're bringing up a new object of the sentence. Second, expanding on the overturning of the previous expectation, the adverb "cai" is also often used to convey a feeling of later than expected or more difficult than expected. In contrast to the first usage. You notice that a time or event is mentioned before a tie in this case, and the pattern goes: subject, time or event, tie, verb, object. So here, to convey similar feelings, tie can be translated into English as finally or not until. For example, if I say, Lucy 今天八点才看书 ，Lucy 看完书才睡觉。I am saying, Lucy at eight today finally read, or Lucy didn't read until eight today, and Lucy finished reading then finally went to bed. Now, can you figure out the meaning of the following sentences? Lucy 去了很多家店，才买到这本书。Lucy 花了很久才看完这本书。The meanings are, Lucy went to many stores. Then finally, she successfully bought this book. Lucy spent a long time. Then finally, she finished reading this book. This usage of "cai" was also briefly discussed in my previous video about "jiu," which is a word often used to convey a feeling of earlier than expected. I recommend that you watch that video if you haven't already. Next, the third usage of "cai" as an adverb. Is extending even further from the overturning of the previous expectation idea. This is when it's used to convey the feeling of less than expected or worse than expected. In this scenario, some numbers are usually mentioned after "cai," so we can translate "cai" into English as "merely" or "only." If Lucy says, "Today I read all day," 可是才看了二十页 she's saying. Today I read all day, but I only read 20 pages. If Lucy says, "I bought 20 books this month," 可是才看了五本 
she is saying, "I bought twenty books this month, but I only read five of them." Now that we have finished learning how "cai" is used as an adverb, let's take a look at how it is used as a verb. Extending from the meaning of "only" or "merely," when "cai" is used as an adverb, the verb "cai" simply means to be only or to be merely. If I tell you, Lucy 才二十岁，可是已经大学毕业了。I am saying, Lucy is merely twenty years old, but she has already graduated from college. If Lucy says, 这本书才二十元，不贵 ，she means this book is only twenty yuan. It's not expensive. Great job. You have finished learning about the ways "cai" is used as an adverb and a verb. In the next video, I'll continue to introduce the various meanings "cai" has as a noun. See you then. As always, to help you practice, please take a look at the following English sentences and think about how you would say them in Chinese. You can find the answers on my website. If you have any questions about any Chinese grammar point that confuses you, please leave a comment below. For customized Chinese lessons, please reach me at TwinCitiesChineseTutor.us. Thank you for watching.